confirmed is that of the two captured pilots. No details yet about their conditions. We'll have the latest headlines for you coming up in about a half hour. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. The factor switches into war mode. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. According to all the military experts, the war is going well. Saddam's days are indeed numbered. But if you watch too much TV news coverage, your perspective can get warped. That's because, by its very nature, the news business focuses on the negative. Thus, when anything bad happens to American and British troops, the coverage is intense and repetitive. Of course, we don't know the chaos that the Iraqi military is experiencing because we're not there to see it. Talking Points cautions everyone not to jump to conclusions about the military situation. As in Afghanistan, the end could come very quickly. There have been few controversies over the news coverage. Number one, should TV news show pictures of dead bodies? Ted Koppel says yes, because we need to remind people that war is hell. I say graphic pictures are not necessary because anyone with a brain knows war is awful and terrible pictures can be used against the USA by people who hate us both in our own country and overseas. And speaking of people who hate us, this Michael Moore character has completely lost all credibility after his disgraceful appearance on the Academy Awards last night. Mr. Moore has always been over the top, but now I truly believe he despises this country. And if we could read his mind, although it would be a short story, I bet we see he's actually rooting against America. Maybe I'm wrong, but this guy is subversive and deserves all the scorn he got from the Hollywood crowd. Now back to reality. Until the war ends, the fact will be giving you facts and opinion, but we're going to avoid speculation and rumors. We're still trying to pin down a report from CBS News that claimed an Iraqi prisoner was carrying Cipro. That's the anecdote to anthrax. If that report is true, it's obviously very telling. Anthrax is at the heart of this war. Finally, Talking Points freely admits rooting for America, Britain, and Australia in the war against Iraq. We are a news analysis program with a heavy dose of opinion, and my opinion is the world is a better place without Saddam Hussein. But that opinion will not shade our coverage, will not interfere with us bringing you the facts. But in the no-spin zone, we always want you to know our vantage point. And that's the memo. Now for the top story tonight, the up-to-the-minute military situation inside Iraq. Joining us now from Washington, Major General Paul Vallely and Major Bob Bevilacqua. I got it. I got it, Major. Good job, All Bill. Right. My parents I mean, are happy. It, it only took me three years, but I got it. Also here in the studio, Colonel David Hunt, all our Fox News military analysts, all have been working very, very hard. All right, Colonel, we're going to start with you because you're here. Um, the Army's 3rd Infantry Division is within 50 miles of Baghdad. You know, it, it really is funny when I see all the newspaper headlines, fierce resistance, you know, five days, we control three quarters of the country, and we're in 50 miles of Baghdad. Now, they could go in any time they wanted, correct? Yes, absolutely. And what is stopping them? Uh, there are, we've decided to fight this war with humanity. We decided not to kill, almost, kill civilians, only take out military targets. It's very dangerous for our people to do it that way. So it, it's a political decision and a military. One is, I don't think we're going to go into Baghdad. We're not going to go house to house fighting with these guys. We've got special operations people, CIA people, decided to go in there. We have to bomb first, get those divisions around the, the Hammurabi and the Republican guards, seal it off and let these special guys do their work inside. All right. But if they run inside Baghdad, Colonel, which I believe they will, I mean, they're taking a terrible pounding even as we speak. Um, they're bombing Baghdad. Now, B-52s just took off from Britain, so you know they're going to bomb throughout the morning. It's uh, morning over there now. Um, I, I suspect they'll just run in there, hide in the mosques, hide in the hospitals, hide behind the civilians. You know, they're noted for doing that. Um, so how are we going to get them out of there? Yeah. When, you, when they go with stuff like that, you won't see tanks blowing up mosques. You see special people going in to get this again. We're going after Hussein and his 40 thieves. We don't necessarily have to kill all his military. We could have done that a long time ago. Again, we want. We're trying to say, look, we're regime change, weapons of mass destruction, and and leave so you something think special intact. Special ops can get them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You do. Yeah, I all do. right. Last question for you, and then we'll go back to uh, General Vallely. I think they should have taken out the uh, television, the Iraqi television of course. tower. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, why haven't they taken because, out the Iraqi television tower? Because okay, the reason is because it's in a daycare center. It's in a place where even our smart bombs can't get out. It's in a, it's in a hospital-like place inside oh, a building. is that right? Correct. Everyone so Iraqi TV is in with little children. Correct. They say, correct. And that's, you're, everyone knows every, you're right, but that's why they put it in there. We can't get at that with a cruise missile. All right. Now, General, the reason I say that is because, as you know, uh, in the, in the uh, invasion of Germany during World War II, the German people thoroughly fed up with Hitler, if only because their country was rubble. 
and, and, and me, most of them dead, still didn't rise up against him because they feared the SS, the Gestapo. Saddam Hussein has built his same government on the, along the lines of the Nazis. And these people fear, all right, these secret police, these Republican guards coming back. You knock out the television, you knock out these images of Saddam, I think it falls faster. Bill, I'll tell you, I'm surprised that we didn't find a way to take out that transmitter, that TV station. Uh, we do have uh, different ways of doing that, so I'm very surprised. I would have made sure that was taken out. Yeah, because it's just pure propaganda. They're propping up Saddam Hussein may be dead. I mean, Tony Blair said today, he, there's a good chance that guy's dead. And they're just using videotape that was uh, recorded before the war started and all of this stuff. Now, there were 57 edits, General. I don't know whether you know that. In the 30-minute broadcast today, 57 edits. For those of you watching at home, that means they took that tape. For some reason, they hit it, cut it 57 times. You don't do that on a live broadcast. Why? Why would you do it? Well, you know, that, that's a great question. I mean, they're, they are good at propaganda, Bill, just like Hitler and Goebbels and that whole Nazi uh, regime. And I told you many times, uh, I think in the past, they hired a French PR firm to help them. Yeah. And uh, they're good at it, and we're letting them do it to a degree. But uh, we need to shut that communication down 100% if we can. And we can do that also by really blitzing on these divisions that are on the outside of Baghdad there. We've really got to blitz these, hit them hard, soften those targets up, so that when the forces get up there within the next 24 to 36 hours, they're on their knees. All right, but I believe, and I think most other military experts general believe, that Hammurabi, Medina, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar, or whatever the, guy, the division's name are, they're going to melt back into town, and they're going to hide in the mosques, and they're going to do, because standing out there fighting the, uh, the infantry, that's, they're going to get slaughtered. They knew well, that. Sure, sure so they are. The colonel believes that we can flush those guys out with special ops inside Baghdad. I'm not so sure. Hey, Bill, listen, we've had agents in Baghdad. That's how the decapitation strike came about, with agents on the ground who knew who was there, who was going to be in the bunker. And so if the agent network was set up properly, and I'm not sure the extent of it, we would know where those senior military officials are moving and where their brigades are and their divisions are. And with the bunker busters we have, the precision aircraft, believe me, we could get many of them well ahead of time. Yeah, so. I hope so, because we're going to have to blow up those mosques, and you know what those Al Jazeera idiots are going to do with that. Now, Major, um, what are you hearing about uh, casualties on the other side? As I said in the tea points, we don't have journalists in there. And the journalists that are in uh, Baghdad, the four or five of them now, they're confined to the Al Rashid Hotel. Um, we really don't know the devastation that we've caused the other side. Are you hearing anything? No, Bill, actually I'm, I'm not, and I kind of wish we did have uh, some coverage of that because we're just getting a one-sided story. Right. And, and you bring up a, a very interesting point on the location of our media in the hotel there, and there was a great facade that was put on the other day with supposed pilots that had been shot down and were in the river, and the Iraqis, of course, are shooting their, their AKs into the river, and it just so happens to ha you know take place right in front of the only hotel that's got media in it. So it is all about spin. It is all about putting on a show, and um, I really wish we could get a better look on what's happening. Yeah, on because the other it, side. Would, it would take the pressure off Americans who are going like, you know, ooh, what is it? Is it out of control over there? I mean, we have lost by uh, our count by the time we went on the air at 8 p.m. Eastern time, less than 50 killed, less than 50 uh, Allied troops killed in the first Gulf War. There about 300 killed half in combat, half in, uh, you know, other related incidents. Now, less than 50 killed, and you, uh, Major, control three-quarters of the country and are 50 miles outside of Baghdad. I call that a pretty good record right now. It, it is, it is, Bill, but um, I would be careful about using a term of we control three-quarters of the country because I'll tell you, I was a little surprised. I was a little taken back when I saw the level of resistance that was happening in some of the areas that we've already passed through and the fact that they're able to ambush and capture and subsequently torture uh, Americans. It, All right, uh, but you know what they're doing. They're faking surrenders and they're doing all well, this see, other the, stuff. The, the major, problem you know? is, Bill, and, and this kind of happened to us in, in Haiti. We had a town of 250,000 
the military, the FRAP, the attaches, took off their uniforms and went into civilian clothes. Yeah, and the only way you that. smoke those guys out right. is by either getting informants and paying them off or you get them to make but the major, first my move point is against this. you. If they get two pilots, that's page one story. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's, everybody's going wild. The cables are going nuts. All news radio are telling you 36 hours they got two pilots. We could have killed 20,000 of those people. We don't know anything. The proof is, Major, we are 50 miles outside of Saddam's bunker in five days. Well, if Saddam is still alive, I'm sure he has the, uh, the mother of all migraines because I'm pretty positive <laughs> we cracked his melon about five nights ago when we yeah. slammed. Well, I think his son Uday is ooh in the ground. Now, what do you say? Am I, am I wrong here by being an optimistic on this thing? No, no I think it's absolutely right. It's a, it's a brilliant campaign. There's some disagreement within the military about the size of the force we should have had. We did have to make compensations for Turkey. But it's not, this is a magnificent force. The Air Force has, has done, in the Navy, five aircraft carriers, Marine, British commandos. It's a, it, we took part of a town without firing a shot, Navy SEALs. Yeah, but the other thing that it's bothers me is that the American media is portraying these guys as savage fighters and all of this. What I'm hearing is that we're, we're holding more than 3,000 POWs right, right now, okay? Yeah. About 10 times more, not, yeah, about 10 times more have just put their uniforms down and gone home. Yeah, and, and I just and, deserted. And that's where my leaflet drops. That's what we wanted to do. Again, we've said we're not at war with you guys. We're at war with your bosses. Right. This is very difficult. It puts a lot more pressure on the military. It's more dangerous for us to fight this way. We could have lined up, bombed for 50 days, flattened the country and taken over. We haven't done that. We've been very surgical. Can't do it. We've yeah, been we very can't surgical. Do it. But you know what the, uh, the real uh, general, the real thing that breaks my heart is when you listen to the CENTCOM press conference today with uh, General Franks, you have these Arab reporters go, I want to tell you, you, you have five farmers shot down 18 Apache helicopters. That's what they print. So no matter what we do, no matter how humane we are, no matter how many Americans are killed because we didn't want to bomb this or that because civilians won't be there, the Arabs are going to print this crazy stuff anyway. Not all of them, but enough of them so that the American haters have fuel. You know? Well, that's right, Bill. And the longer you, you permit that to go on, that's why we need to take the gloves off We've got to do what has to be done here within the next 48 to uh, 72 hours, and we've got to bring that armed forces, anybody that's supporting Saddam, uh, from the regime standpoint, we have got to make sure that we take them down, take them down early. So time to take the gloves off, Bill. All right, and, uh, because I think we've seen shock and awe light, Major. I don't think we've seen the <laughs> shock and awe that they have designed, and probably for good reason. They, they're so accurate now. They don't have to level as... Uh, Mm -hmm. Both the colonel and the general would say, but I don't think we've seen nearly the power that we have. Do you disagree? No, Bill, I, I agree with you, and um, I have a little reservation, a little concern. I don't know the entire plan, so I don't want to be critical of it. And the guys over there are doing a great job. My concern is this having spent 17 years in the military, I think there's a little bit too much political correctness that has infiltrated down to the lowest level. And I agree with what the general said. We have to take the gloves off. The last thing we need to do is to allow the crooks, robbers, murderers, rapists, and thieves, which is the Iraqi military, to set down their guns and walk home. Those guys need to be incarcerated or shot in the head, not to be allowed to go home. That is of great concern Yeah, but we me. can't catch them. You know, there, and there's a difference between the draftees and the Republican Guard. I know what you're saying. All the Republican Guard got to be held accountable. And you know, Major, that's why they're fighting. Because they know they got blood on their hands, Bill, and they know and, and, as soon as this goes down, guys, everybody's going to be pointing at them like this. They're going to be in uniform. They're going to be in civilian clothes, and they're going to walk right back into society. No, but I think society's going to turn on them. To get them. I think so. I think their villages are going to turn on these guys and say, "Hey, Ahmed over there shot my brother." Okay, I really believe it's just going to be in, like in, Germany in, in Bill, World War II. They're going to be pointing at. You're them. absolutely right. And when that starts to happen, when that starts to fall apart. Guess who's got to go in there and play referee and cop? We do. I don't think we do. Let them oh, handle absolutely. their own people. Let we, them we, have their to, own. we have to stabilize that country in order to stand it up so Jay Gardner can get an organization in there that becomes the new Iraq. We're going to have to assist in stabilizing that. All right. That's a lot of work. Uh, we got three minutes left. I'm going to give you each uh, a minute. I've got, uh, we'll start here with uh, Colonel Hunt. Now, up north, all right? Turkey screwed us, no question. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, okay. And uh, their economy is collapsing. They're going to get what they deserve. Military may even overthrow that government before the uh, year is out because they really did. However, it seems to me now that there's some kind of momentum coming back north, all right? Yeah, well, we've just got a two star general put up there, a Marine. We've got their courage, a lot of them, they're vicious. 
Um, we've got them organized in special operations. When you say the Kurds are vicious, you mean they're vicious fighters. Vicious fighters, yeah. And yeah, they're, they're on our side. They're on our side, but they're kids, dogs, cats, old ladies, everybody's bad there. The Kurds are very they're tough, tough fighters right, on our side. Right. And we got them with our special operations guys, and we're going to have a second front with this two-star. We haven't seen the 4th Division Division come in yet. We've got some calves still to get in this fight. And we've got another front to come in. We have the 100, nobody's felt the 101st, 82nd, 82nd, everyone divisions might yet. And there's a lot more in the special operations community they haven't seen yet. All right, how do they get up north? Are they parachuting in up there? Who's that? The 101st is going by truck. They're following the 3rd Infantry Division, which is on the left hand side of this attack. So they're go and they're going, going by truck. By, yeah, the other 82nd is going around. by plane. All right. General, um, do you see any kind of a situation where uh, Saddam Hussein, you say between uh, 48 and 72 hours, is that what you're giving this war? Bill, uh, I've said from the beginning it'll take five to seven days to get to the outskirts of Baghdad, and we're going to do that. But we're in no rush after that. If we set a 30-day campaign, we've got three weeks for that regime to fall apart from within. We don't have to rush it once we get there. We've got to surgically take out the uh, units that are there, any kind of resistance we can, and we've got to make sure that that breaks from the inside and we have time to do it. So we don't want to rush. We don't need a lot of urban fighting right away or perhaps not at all. And I hope we don't have to do that. All right. We're going to break them. The only problem is the longer it goes, the more propaganda against That's the United true. States. No doubt about and it. And the more instability in the countries that, are, uh, that hate us anyway. Major, uh, would you uh, knock out Al Jazeera if you uh, capture Baghdad and no more pictures for them? Bill, I, I kind of like the fact that Al Jazeera is up and running because I think it's a good way for us to collect intelligence. Once uh, we no longer need them, I would like to see them go away. And, um, you know, I, the one thing I really want to say, I watched, a, I, I viewed a videotape in Victoria Clark's office a couple weeks ago, and it was on the humans, human rights violations inside uh, Iraq. And that really, for me, cemented this whole issue that we needed to be over there. And I really appreciate the fact that American servicemen and women are risking their lives right now so that we can free other people. Yeah, and, wait till and, they see and, all that stuff, Major. And that's what this is all about. Yeah, wait till, they see, wait till this is all over and they see all that Incredible. stuff. Incredible. But, you know, no matter what you show them, they're going to say it didn't happen. They're going to deny it. You know, how, you know how it goes, guys. Appreciate it very much. Very interesting conversation, gentlemen. Next on The Rundown, we'll talk with an American captured by Iraq during the first Gulf War. And then, what happens to the violent demonstrators after they're arrested? We're tracking it for you. And we hope you stay tuned. This program at where U.S. forces are 50 miles away from that city and they can expect a wake up call in a few hours as B-52s are on their way from London. Good morning, Baghdad. In the personal story segment tonight, as we reported last week, Senator Tom Daschle, one of the most powerful Democrats in the country, supported military force against Saddam in 1998 when President Clinton bombed Iraq. Daschle said, quote, we fully support the president's decision today to undertake military action with our allies against Iraq, Saddam Hussein's defiance of the U.N. Security Council resolutions and U.N. weapons inspections is a clear violation of the international community's determination to ensure that Iraq is no longer poses a threat to the region. But... Mr. Daschle was harshly critical of President Bush before the war started. And I'm saddened. Saddened that this president failed so miserably at diplomacy that we're now forced to war. Saddened that we have to give up one life because this president couldn't create the kind of diplomatic effort that was so critical for our country. You know, those comments have closed a furor. I believe that Tom Daschle's political career is pretty much over. Joining us now from Washington is Fox News political analyst and former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. I know you want to uh, get to another point, a point first before we talk politics, and that is the uh, terrible pictures that Al Jazeera is running and Iraqi television is running of the uh, captured POWs and perhaps uh, POWs that they executed. What do you want to say on that? Well, Bill, I, I just think that every American, whatever their thoughts were as this war started, Every American should feel real anger that I think these prisoners were executed. I don't think they got shot in the forehead by accident. And I think it's clearly a violation of the uh, international rules of war. It's a, it's a war crime to be exploiting the prisoners. You just interviewed a former POW in Iraq who indicated that his treatment was certainly a violation of international law. And, and I just believe that every American should come shoulder to shoulder in affirming that this is an outlaw regime, this is a brutal regime, this is a regime which has been killing Americans at point-blank range, and the wish of a determination both to liberate the country and then to track down people like the man who's on that videotape 
and make sure that they are treated as war criminals and that they are punished accordingly. Well, you got 70% of the country who believes the way that you do, Mr. Speaker, but you got 30% of the country that are going to say, hey, we brought it upon ourselves. We shouldn't be there in the first place. P did you see the Academy Awards last night? Did you see that, I, Michael? I didn't Morton? see it. It was disgraceful. I mean, it wasn't a matter of, of dissent. It wasn't a matter of somebody being inappropriate. It was disgraceful. It was a person basically hating his country. And you what? know that maybe 10%, 12% of the American population hates the country. So no matter how many bullet holes you show of U.S. servicemen, those people are never going to come around to your side. Look, there's, there are some people who would appease Saddam at any cost, no matter how many people he killed, no matter how often he used chemical weapons against his own people. There are other people who would blame President Bush for what President Chirac of France did. Let's be very clear. To whatever degree diplomacy failed in the last four months, it is because the French government set out deliberately to undermine the British, American, Spanish effort to isolate Saddam. So let's be very clear where the blame is here. Oh, yeah, we know that, and that's why we call for the boycott of French goods. What did you make of uh, President Bush calling uh, Putin today and saying, hey, you better stop selling the uh, night scopes and the anti tank weapons? You know, it, it, it's kind of ridiculous for him to say that because nobody can get anything into Iraq now. I mean, you can't sell them anything well, if they're through. I, I, but, you know, just the fact that, that Russian uh, companies through the Ukraine, which is their facilitator, uh, we're, we're putting these things in the back door when they knew there could be a conflict. I mean, these aren't our friends. Russia's not our friend. Look, look, I, I, I was told earlier today that this was in part another example of the State Department bureaucracy's failure, that we have for a year been trying to communicate with the Russians about this and could never get up the nerve to be very direct about it. But I, I draw a real distinction. I, the Russians aren't necessarily our friends, but they didn't go out of their way to hurt us. President Chirac went out of his way to undermine the British American efforts. He went out of his way to use France's veto in the UN. And I think if Chirac had stayed with us, that both Russia and China would have stayed with I us. I absolutely also. agree. I mean, Chirac's so, a villain, there's no question. He's going to pay an enormous price, as millions of Americans will not buy French goods and uh, will not travel there. And that economy will, as the Turks, the same thing, will collapse. You wait and see. Now, let's get to politics. Uh, new poll today, Washington Post 68% approval rating of the president, 70% approve the war effort. Uh, and I believe that Tom Daschle, because of uh, his inconsistency here, is in the uh, Trent Lott category now. I, I see the Democrats moving away from him. Uh, I don't think he has a constituency among the American people anymore. I think he's through. Am I wrong? Well, I think the Democrats are deeply split. I think that the, uh, the Kennedy wing of the Democratic Party, what you might call the pro-French wing of the Democratic Party, uh, would appease Saddam, would do virtually anything. They probably are very proud of, of Senator Daschle's statements, even if they are contradictory to what he said back uh, in 1996 and again in 1998. I think there's another wing of the Democratic Party uh, that is much more realistic and that recognizes that Saddam really is evil and that what President Bush all is right, doing is All right, but it all necessary. hinges on the folks. You know that. You know that better than anybody. Well, it's the folks that give politicians power and the folks that take it away. And the folks now have heard Daschle in 98 say what he said and they hear him now and he hasn't explained it he's hiding under the desk and all of the powerful Democrats Lieberman Kerry Edwards the big three running for president they don't want anything to do with him well I, th I think it'll be interesting to watch though if you watch Kerry uh, Kerry's comments the night that the war began were in California that we need a regime change in Washington yeah. uh, and a direct takeoff on George W. Bush. So I think that, that it, it all depends on, on the politics inside the Democratic Party. You don't think Daschle's damaged? <clears throat> you don't think uh, he's of, damaged? Well, Bill, of course he's damaged some, but, but you need to recognize that, remember that you said it's 70, 30 or whatever? Yeah. Well, that 30 percent is largely in the Democratic Party. So inside his own party, he may actually have a majority I don't think who so. agree with his current position. No, he I may well I, be right. 50 percent of Democrats support the war, okay? And right. uh, you got a guy now that basically in his own state, if he ran tomorrow in his own state, I tell you he loses, Mr. Speaker. I think he's done. You know, and, and Trent Lott in his own state probably held the power. But he lost it with his peers. And I think that Daschle is, uh, is through. I really do. I'll give you the last word. Well, I just think the most important thing is to recognize the next few days are going to be very difficult. We are going to take casualties. And Americans need to stand firmly side by side with their troops, not with the president, with their young men and women in uniform in order to make sure we can get through this period and defeat Saddam Hussein. All right, Mr. Speaker, as always, thank you very much. In a moment, can President Bush maintain his 70% approval rating if, as the Speaker indicated, casualties are going to mount?
We will explore that and the split, deep split in the Democratic Party with Lanny Davis in a moment. side of the day, the cable television ratings are in, and the most popular news program in the country continues to be the factor. And guess where our ratings are the highest? Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you very much. Go Jags. Our ratings are the lowest in San Francisco, but not for the reason you might think. San Francisco is the only downtown area in the United States that refuses to carry the Fox News Channel. Gee, I wonder why. Isn't it funny that some of the most progressive people in the country are not progressive at all when it comes to freedom of speech. Could be ridiculous. Find tonight the mail. The mailman has a hernia. There's so much of it. Roger Gagnon, Corona, California, O'Reilly. I've never seen a news person so against the country as you are against France. Grow up and long live the USA and France. Kim Ransire, Chico, California. Bill, thank you for challenging Jane Hall about her questions concerning the cost of the war. It's funny that the left only questions expenditures when it comes to defense. Rita McClure, Wapakoneta, Wapakoneta, got it, Ohio. My view on the news media reporting on the Iraq situation is that they analyze until they paralyze. Good line, Rita. Rick, Dick, Rick Dixon, <laughs> Knoxville, Tennessee. All the Iraqis have to do is watch Fox News and they can find out exactly what we are doing. Oh, come on, get in the game, Mr. Dixon. Military has sharp rules about what the correspondents with the troops can and cannot report, as they should have. Nate Burnett, Kansas. Mr. O'Reilly, you should not have been so hard on Senator Daschle. If I am correct, he supported Mr. Clinton's bombing of Iraq because he felt there was no other way to get the message to Saddam Hussein. Daschle thought that President Bush should have given Saddam more time. To do what, Mr. Burnett? It's been going on for 12 years. Daschle's stance is contradictory unless he explains how he turned from hawk to dove. He's through, in my opinion. Ray Yeager, Burke, South Dakota. Bill, thank you for exposing Daschle's double talk. He has become an embarrassment to his constituents not that he cares. Cindy and Tommy Marshall, Lancaster, South Carolina. We keep hearing that President Bush failed at diplomacy. Who in their right mind believes diplomacy would have ever worked with Saddam? It was diplomacy with our so-called allies that failed. And you're right, Saddam would never respond to words. Robert Wright, Lowell, Eric, Arkansas. O'Reilly, your statement that if you were a prosecutor, you would make life difficult for peace protesters sounds just like what Saddam might do. Well, he'd hang them. But Mr. Wright, you uh, heard what you wanted to hear. I said if the protesters broke the law, I would make their lives difficult. Big difference. Ralph Campbell, Morietta, California. I have a question for you, O'Reilly. Do the Joseph Abood suits make the man, or do you make the suits? Abood definitely props me up, Mr. Campbell. I'm jelly underneath this jacket. Josh Warren, Manitou Springs, Colorado, Wild Bill. I was reading the No Spin Zone in the park the other day, and a lady approached me and asked if I watched you. Could be true love. A No Spin Romance, Josh? The best kind. By the way, the No Spin Zone paperback opens at number eight on the New York Times bestseller list next Sunday. Driving them nuts. Drives them crazy. <laughs> best, the best reason to buy the No Spin Zone paper drives the New York Times crazy. How about that website? www.foxnews.com slash O'Reilly. I sold two million books. They won't review the books. Two million. Also, how about emailing us with pithy comments? O'Reilly at foxnews.com. O'Reilly at foxnews.com. Name in town, name in town, name in town. If you wish to opine and tomorrow, we're going to use a lot of foreign mail. So you got an opinion on a war over there? I know you're watching us all around the world. Whip it right in here, okay? Name in town, please. That is it for us today. As always, we thank you for watching The Factor. Please remember the Radio Factor every day on Westwood One. Hannity and Combs next. Alexander Haig, Fred Thompson. I'm Bill O'Reilly. We do hope to see you again next time. And remember, the spin stops right here.